spiritual advantage. I feel when you are a spiritual person, you have advantage over natural people. An arrow can be thrown against everybody to die, but because you are spiritual, you can intercept with demonic arrows and leave once others are dying. One of the things I've come to realize is that prayer guarantees you spiritual advantage. Studying the word guarantees you spiritual advantage. Fellowshipping in worship guarantees you spiritual advantage. It, and it's very important to understand that developing a spiritual advantage is very, very important to put the level at the, the devil at the place of disadvantage. Can I hear you say amen? amen. And I, I want to teach you about some things today that can help you build a very strong spiritual advantage. Are you listening to me? For example, me standing here, if somebody says you are praying against me, you are wasting your time. If you take me to Juju, you are wasting your time. If you don't like me, you are wasting your time. Because you liking me or don't, do, do, that doesn't like me will never stop God from blessing me. I am, do you understand what I'm saying? Because by the reason of certain dimensions of covenant, God has positioned me into a realm where I can never be disadvantaged. It is spiritual. It is spiritual. Because the blessings of God according to Ephesians, you see the Bible said, Blessed be the Lord, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual what? Blessings. So, so we are spiritually already blessed. You have to validate that point that you are spiritually blessed. And that is going to help you to be able to overcome every natural tendencies that make you feel as if you are cursed. There is nothing I go through in my life that makes me feel like I'm cursed. No. Because a man cannot be blessed by God and still be cursed by God. It's, 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 it can't happen. Who am I communicating here? Yeah. And so, let's read our first scripture. Philippians chapter 4, 3, verse 3 to 4. Philippians chapter 3, verse... For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. We are what? Who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and we have no confidence in the flesh. Do you know today, I want to tell you something. Do you know wood is a flesh? Do you know wood is a flesh? Do you know every human being is a flesh when you remove the spirit from the person? Do you know stones are fleshy activities? Stones. See, do you know it's fleshy activities? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, the interesting thing that will amaze you is that all these things that are there, we have no confidence in them because our confidence is in the spirit. Our confidence is in Christ Jesus. Can I hear you say amen? So, verse 3, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no, have no confidence in the flesh. Next verse, quickly, please. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else think he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. That means I'm tempted to have confidence in the flesh. But because I am focused on Christ, I am no longer confident in the flesh. Verse number, I think verse 4 is okay. So though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else think he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Last week I told you there are people who have CVs but might not have jobs. And there are people who don't have CVs and might have jobs. But if you have CV, it positions you at the level of ad advantage to get jobs. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are not hearing me. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? But we have no confidence in our level of academic height. We have confidence in the God that can put us in the heart of people. We have confidence. I thought I would hear you say we have confidence. Say I have confidence. So just as physical circumcision is a loaded content, so also the spiritual impact. When we say somebody is circumcised, it means certain aspect of the flesh is cut away. Now, hear me today. Certain aspect of our flesh must be cut away so that we can become hygienic in the spirit. Certain aspect of our desires must be cut away so that we can become sane in the spirit. As a matter of fact, if certain things are not cut, we will not bleed. The bleeding is our sacrifice. So everybody here, even though you have been circumcised, you must understand that anytime a child is circumcised, the child bleeds. So anytime you want to sacrifice to live a holy life, anytime you sacrifice to live right with God, anytime you sacrifice to be in church on time, Anytime you sacrifice to love God, anytime you sacrifice to live a forgiving life, you still bleed in some areas of your life. And the bleeding is your sacrifice you are giving to God that you are letting go of the flesh and you are letting hold of the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you sure? Now, it is my prayer today that God build you up into a dimension where you will be ready to make certain sacrifices unto God. And, and in the school of the spirit, nothing is accidental. What did I say? In the school of the spirit, nothing is accidental. Kopara dasaya. So when somebody says you will not marry, it is a statement made and that word has now become a spirit. Don't allow that word to be formed before you deform it. Immediately somebody speak a word, spirit is released. So what do you do? You must wake up and begin to address that spirit and say to the person, I will marry and guess what will attend my marriage, my wedding? You are not certain. I think I have to find somebody else. And, and, and I'm going to give birth to, I will be pregnant and it will attend my child dedication. I think I have to find somebody else to preach to. Are you really in church? I will marry, I will have children, and it will attend my children, my child dedication. My children will graduate and it will follow me to the graduation of my children. That your words are null and void. Can I hear you shout, Oh Lord, I demystify every word spoken against my life, visibly or invisibly, knowingly or unknowingly, whether I heard it or I did not hear it. On this altar today, I destroy the power of words that has been spoken over and against my life. Give the Lord a shout in this house. So in the school of the spirit, nothing is accidental. Our heart is circumcised to become spiritually circumstantial in our perspective. So if by, by, by carelessness you said you were, you will see what I will do to you. You to carelessly say, you were, what I will do to you, you will never recover. Your reaction will destroy demonic actions. Life is about more of response than what, is, what comes to you. Who am I communicating with here? Somebody can have a broken heart and will become mad. 
and will remain at the psychiatric hospital for the rest of her life. Somebody too would have a breaking heart and said, I knew this guy was not good for me. God took this guy away. The right man is coming. And that day, when they are doing praise and worship, you would dance. And people will not know why you are dancing. You are dancing because God took the old. God took the old because the new is coming. Wow. So, you must understand this. I want us to now look at seven ascendancy of spiritual advantage. Seven ascendancy of spiritual what? Advantage. Shout, I am spiritually advantaged. One more time. Say, I am spiritually advantaged. The first one is ascendancy affinity. Ascendancy affinity of affinity. Colossians chapter 3, I wanted the verse 4, but the verse 1 spoke highly to my spirit in my study room that I wanted to show you. He said, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Say ascendancy. I can't hear you. Say ascendancy. Seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. It, verse 2, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. This is serious. Serious. Verse 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. This is the mystery of Christianity. You died. Say, I am dead, but I'm alive. Ask the person, is it not a mystery? Shout, I died, but I'm alive. That is why nobody can kill you. Because you are immortality, living immortality. You are not mortality living in immortality. You are immortality living in mortality. So nobody can kill a man who is a spirit. Spirit cannot die. Yeah. Spirit does not die. Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, appears, who is your life? <laughs> When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So Christ is not coming for you. Christ is coming with you. Let me say that again. Read verse 4. You think I'm joking. Read verse 4. Let's read like a mask. Let's go. When Christ, who is our life, appears. So if Christ is your life, and Christ is coming. What is he bringing? What is he bringing? When he appears, then what will happen? Then what happened? Okay. So when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. I like the other one. I like the King James. I like the King James. I love your word. When Christ, who is our life, so your life, my life, is in who? Is in Christ. Is in who? I can't. Is in who? Christ. One more time. Is in who? Christ. Huh? So when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him. You too will appear with him. So as I'm talking to you, you are seated together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And it's not a joke. It's a validation. You are in Christ Copayata. You are in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ. So because your life is in Christ, you will not find yourself in crisis. When Christ is now coming, he is not coming for you. He is coming with you because you are already in him. 
how do I know that your spirit is in Christ and when you die your soul will also be in Christ but he loves you so much that as he fought for the body of, of Moses he is also coming to resurrect your mortal body are you listening to what I'm saying so you are coming with Christ you are Christ is not coming are you listening to me so if Christ is seated in the heavenly places by the reason of born again you are also seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus that is so strong that you get to understand that you are not ordinary and the circumstances you go through on earth does not define your position in the heavenly realm in the heavenly realm you are higher like Christ you are anointed like Christ you are blessed like Christ give God a clap shout and pray you are coming with him you are coming with who you are coming with, who? with him how can you it's like oh call me call me right now yeah so now he is calling me I said I am coming with Sandra that means Sandra is where I am that is why I am coming with, with him with her so if Sandra is not with me I will not say oh I am prophet Franklin I am coming with Sandra the reason why I'm coming with Sandra is that by proximity Sandra is close to me Sandra is inside me Sandra is around me so I am coming with her now you called me but I said to you I am coming with her this is a mystery in our walk with God that when Jesus is coming Apostle Nkum is also coming with Jesus because Apostle Nkum is in Jesus if you are clapping clap because I'm talking to you this is the mystery behind immortality this is the reason why you can go to a shrine and bend the shrine and the shrine cannot touch you. It's a mystery. I say it's a mystery. This is the reason why you can destroy your family idols and your family idols will never appear to you in your dream. It's a mystery. Why is it a mystery? Because you live in Christ. So, so you are not waiting for you are not waiting for the rapture. I want to demystify certain eschatological and theological technicalities. You are not waiting for you are not waiting for the rapture because when you die, I love your word. Your body goes to the ground, but your spirit is already with him. So what is he now coming for? He is coming to activate your mortal body. So you will hear something like, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you, that same spirit shall revitalize not your spirit, but your mortal body. So God is concerned about your spiritual entity, your soulless realm, and also your mortal Give the Lord a clap and a shout. So then what, the, what makes me so unique? What makes me so unique? I am so unique not because I have all the money in the world. I'm so unique because I live in eternity. And eternity lives inside of me. I'm unique not because I have money in my account. But I'm unique because as small as I am, as filthy as I am, as uncultured as I am, as unqualified as I am, I live in the one who qualifies me before God so much that I sit with Christ. And if Christ is sitting at the right hand side of the Father, then as I'm talking to you, Apostle Lincoln is sitting at the right hand side of the... I don't even know who I am talking about. I don't know who I am blessing today. Oh, I prophesy in the name of Jesus. You are seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Clap your hands and give the Lord a shout. You are not ordinary. Are not ordinary. I want to a fool. Yen and me. Oh no, now yeah. You are not ordinary. 
You are not ordinary. I'm talking about affinity. So you are part of the divine covenant that bonds you with God. And if Christ is bonded with God, then you are bonded with God. Are you listening to me? You are bonded with God. You are not ordinary. Shout it louder. I'm not ordinary. You don't, you, do you, do you don't believe it? Is that why you are not shouting it? Come on, shout. I am not ordinary. Shout it again. Shout it like your mouth is so say, I am not ordinary. I could not hear you. Shout again. I am not ordinary. So the bonding is based on brooding. The brooding of the spirit determines the bonding process. I love your word. So when the Lord breathes on you, you bond with him. You bond with him. You, what do you do? You bond with him. Your bonding is based on covenant. What is covenant? What is covenant? Covenant is an established legal agreement between two parties. Most times with witnesses. Can I hear you say amen? The blood of Jesus is your witness. So your daily routine will bet eternal growth in him. Your daily routine, your daily routine, your consciousness that you live in heaven will change the way you do your things. Will change the way you think. Nothing tickles you because where you are living is more powerful than where, where you are living now. Am I communicating with somebody here? So somebody who is a Christian who lives in a kiosk is more relevant to God than someone who is not a Christian that lives in the palace. That palace is where the person will live. And when the person dies, they bury the person at the palace or outside the palace. And that is the end of the person. Because if you are not above, you will be below. So the level of your affinity to God will determine how eternity will favor you. How eternity will do what? I don't like the way you are talking to me. Talk to me. How, how eternity will do what? So your affinity with God, your relationship with God, your koinonia with God, your level of bonding with God will determine how eternity will favor you. How does will eternity favor me? Everybody is in Christ. But when Christ comes, there is a place that Christ will distribute all of us to be. I am going to prepare a place for you. If it was not so, I wouldn't have told you. So there is a place for us to go. There is a place for us to go. I said there is a place for us to go. And by the grace of God, we will get there. Shout that amen like a believer, yes. So you will rule in glory with Christ. You will rule in glory with Christ. It is time to bond with Christ. It is time to do what? It is time to bond with Christ. And as I'm talking to you right now, you are bonding. You see what you are hearing is making you bond. It's bonding. Is it, is it a good English? Yeah, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. You know. it, 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 what, what you are hearing right now, it is doing what? It is bonding you. It is doing what? Bonding you, it, it is it is it is bringing you closer to Christ. It is it is merging you. It is infusing you. Are you listening to my English? I pray for you today that you bond with Christ. Come on, let me hear you. Amen. Like a believer here. Yeah. So you will hear something like, "Yebe se no se Yesu Christo nyame ba no ba yane no." So we will be like him when Jesus, the Son of God, comes. But for now, he is preparing us. What is he preparing us for? He's preparing us for where we are going. He is teaching us the scripture, which is the kingdom culture, which is the heavenly culture. So, so some of you, you will go to heaven and you realize that you are villagers in heaven because the language of heaven is the language of the word. The language of heaven 
is the language of the word. So stop, stop watching reels on TikTok and everywhere without reading the word. Because when we get to the heavens, the one who will rule in heaven is the one who is the word. And if you can communicate, you must have the word in you so you can access him. Are you listening to me? Are you sure you are listening to me? So the first ascendance is what? what? The ascendancy of infinity. And the second ascendancy is the ascendancy of attention. Ascendancy of what? Attention. Genesis chapter 17 and verse number 13. I love your word. He who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised. <laughs> and my flesh and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Apostle Nuku, what are you saying? So, we were bought, but not with money. We were bought with the blood. And because Jesus bought us with his blood, blood is unsubstitutionable. Nobody can manufacture blood. Blood tonic. Or oh, abedro. Nobody can substitute blood. Blood is blood. And blood has a genetic language. What does blood have? A genetic, is that not true? Blood has a genetic language. So for there is a blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. And that blood is what redeemed you. And because of that blood, you are now circumcised. You are now circumcised. Are you listening to me? You are now circumcised. So let me tell you, the covenant God has for you and God has with you is eternal covenant. The covenant God has with you is eternal covenant. It is not a temporal covenant. It's a permanent covenant. It's eternal. I say it is eternal. So your destiny increase secures your being and attention in your generation because immediately there is a cut on your flesh. Please, are you listening to me? There is a divine attention on your life. Yeah. Immediately you give your life to Jesus, you become God's property. So he watches over you. So when you read the scripture like, the eyes of the Lord move it to and fro. It is you, he is watching over you. I don't like the way you are shouting it. He is watching over you. He said, he that watches over Israel, he does not sleep and he does not slumber. I am talking about the covenant of divine attention. Yay! Are you shouting amen? I'm preaching to you. I prophesy as you shout amen, receive the grace to become an attention. I don't know what is going on. I don't know whether God even knows me. Uh -uh. He said, I will be with you even until the end of the world. So God have not left you because we are going through a problem. If God is closer to you because we are going through something. So he will see you through. Do you remember the things? Oh, I feel like I'm preaching. Do you remember the things you went through in your life and how you survived those things? You never thought you could survive and now you are surviving. You are looking more beautiful. You are looking more exciting. You are looking more annoying and you never even knew why God saw you through because he's with you even unto the end of the world be seated I love your word 
Groaning is a sign you are growing. You can grow in the knowledge of the Holy Spirit and not be an attention. No, no, no. You are an attention. Shout, I'm an attention. Tell someone, the day I became saved, I became an attention. I don't like it. Say that again. Tell the person, the day I became saved, I became an attention. So as I'm talking to you right now, I am an attention. I am not a concern. Don't bother about me. God is watching over me. And in his own time, he will make all things beautiful. Give God a clap, a shout, and praise in this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who is getting blessed already today? So God's earmark covering is in you putting in an effort to take advantage of his spirit. Say spiritual advantage. So what happened to your mother is because of a level of spiritual level. Is, is it a good English? Is that is because of a level of a spiritual level? My God. But you understood what I wanted to say. I didn't go to school like you. Because of the level of the uh, spiritual level. What an irony. And what happened to your dad is because of his spiritual level. So what will happen to you is based on your spiritual level. So when you increase the density and the intensity of your spiritual level, you develop cap a capacity that expires your, your captivity. I thought you would shout, I hear you. Give somebody a high five and say, develop spiritual capacity. You are an attention. You will be an attention. I don't like, I say you'll be an attention. Every ear will hear. Every eyes will see. You'll be an attention. Very soon they will read your, your story on newspapers. Bloggers will be all around you when you are going everywhere. And they will say, what do you think? Even your speech will become a news. Your dress will become a news. Your walk will become a news. Your talk will become a news. Where you sit will become a news. Who you walk with become a news. Where you walk to become a news. Give the Lord a clap and a shout. I think I'm preaching. The third one is ascendancy of administration. The first one is ascendancy of what? Affinity. The second one is ascendancy of what? Attention. The third one is ascendancy of administration. I love your word. Now, let's look at um, thank you Holy Spirit. Awe urati Bonsem na ya woda 1 Samuel 17 36 Bonsem na ya woda Nya sabwa kwa nyambe Oni mechira ya so oya nende Orija yebuda so your servant has killed both lion and bear. Say administration. I can't hear you. Say administration. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Please let me make this statement so bold and clear. If you lack administration, you will lack admiration. Life is about administration. Your level of administration will determine your level of management. David said to Saul, Sir, if you want my track record, this is my CV. 
First of all, I have killed a lion with my bare hand. Second, I have killed a bear with my bare hand. And he says, sir, in case you are not aware, I want to set the record straight. What I did to the lion and what I did to the bear is what I would do to Goliath. Your past victories should give you a confidence that there are victories ahead. I'm not, I'm not hearing you. Have you, let me, let me ask you a question out of the norm. Have you woken up one day before and for some strange reason there is no food? There is no money? Let me see your hand. What if, if I, it has happened to you before, me. Yes. Maybe some of you there, by the grace of God, you are blessed. You never went through it. No food, no money. But you ate three times. And how you ate, you can't even tell. How you ate. You know, before, eh, life was very good. When Ghana was very good, you will be in your corner and you are sitting somewhere, sitting somewhere in the house and Kwesi Mami will be pounding fufu with some cacao inside and with some uh, uh, that, that thing, that beef, with some beef inside. Are you in church at all? Yeah. And, and, and cacao beef and then some emmanuel Uriba inside. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. With some trawa inside. But then trawa is not cut. It's just cut smaller and it's inside. With some, with some, with some okra, you cut the head off, you cut the head off and you divide it into two and you put it inside. And, 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 and ladies and gentlemen, it start boiling, and then and then you are start you start the aroma start coming to you, and you don't have any food. I want to tell you a story. I'm telling you a story. And as the thing was is everywhere in the house, you think that Charlie, if I get this food there, eh, the way I go chop, and some way or somehow you will be there. Then they will say that. Mommy, uh, 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 auntie, auntie charity. My mother said I should bring you this. Hey, whoa, hey, Jesus. It doesn't happen nowadays, so. It doesn't happen nowadays, so. Do you know that? I, I don't, I can't hear you. Do you know that? It doesn't happen nowadays. Sometimes it can happen, but it doesn't, it's, it really happens nowadays. Who am I communicating with? Yeah? And then the person watu no bwasi trafufu oni bi, we trafufu oni bi. Now all their mouth, I say, go and give it to your mother. Ah! The way you would chop the fufu because you see, if you don't cook the food and you are eating it, sometimes it's very nice. And some of you, you can even be full before the fufu comes. You'll be salivating, you'll be speaking in tongues around, oh, Father, touch the heart of this woman. And the woman look at you and say, oh, charity, ma, me, kwe, on, ye, bi, an, ne, in, ti, no, ma, min, cha, fufu, ka, kran, ye, de, eh, ma, no, ye, fufu, e, na, charity, ma, me, di, abre, we. Sometimes, if you are not careful, you will just, you will make your hand like scissors. The way you start cutting the food, can I hear you say, my God, and let me tell you something today. God is, has a track record. I don't like the way you are shouting. I say God has a track record. Amen. That the God who helped you to overcome the bear. God who helped you to overcome the lion. God who gave you food when you had no money. When you had nothing. That God is still the same yesterday, today and forevermore. He that watched over Israel will watch over you. Function no man. Watch the birds in the air. Who does not even work. Who does not do anything. Our God take care of them. God will take care of you. Shout that amen because I just spoke to you. God will take care of you. Enough for me. He will take care of me. Can, can, can you imagine? Eh? 
uh, Osofo Frank. Saul called David and said, the guy you want to go and fight, I'm even running away from him. I sense so much anointing on my head. I'm, I'm even running away from him. How are you going to fight such a guy? I am a very tall guy. I have military a, a, a record. Tell me about your record. He said, sir, you killed human beings, but I killed animals. Not just animals. I killed a lion. I killed a beard. If you give me that opportunity, I will kill Goliath. Guess what? He killed Goliath. If, are you listening to me? It's a spiritual advantage. It's a spiritual advantage that, that, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It's a spiritual advantage that, that God, that God, that God who took care of you yesterday is still alive. He's not dead. It's a spiritual advantage. Ah, clap your hands and give God praise. It's a spiritual advantage. Tell somebody, I got a spiritual advantage. Yes, yes, yes. Ascendancy of administration. So administration, admission of administration, administration skill. Are you in church? Eh? Admission of administration skill is a great admiration for your generation. You must admit you have that skill. The skill of a reference point. Because he has a track record. He has a track record that he cannot leave you and he cannot, he cannot forsake you. What have you done at all that God will forsake you? And what did you do at all that he loved you? When you were a sinner, he loved you. Is it now that you were a saint, he will hate you? Adikruna minim See that for me. There is an unbelievable victory in administering administrative oil. What I'm trying to say is that anytime you ever remember your failures in the past, it weakens your ability to fight today to gain victory tomorrow. So sometimes forget about your past failures. Focus on your on your past victories. Do you understand? Ah. And depend upon the God that gave you that victory. And watch how your life will have a ripple effect of victories, multiple victories in your generation. Somebody's kidney shut down. And God healed the person's kidney. If you have headache now and you are complaining or there's a diagnosis of cancer, remember the God that healed the kidney is still the same God and he can heal the cancer. I don't like it. I wish somebody would understand where I'm taking you to. So you have God's track record in your hand. And if it is not you, you have heard what he did for somebody else. Ah, Chrissy is not in church. I wanted to use her for an example. I went to visit the woman during the evidence that walked. And she is the one that walked straight to their gates to come and receive me. Now down and said, Papa, thank you for allowing God to use you to make me walk after 11 years. The mystery of life is that if God can make somebody who have not worked for 11 years to work, God has a track record that he can also do it for you. Between you, watch this, between you and your result is your belief. 
allow me to fight. I will kill Goliath for you. Some of you are Goliath killers. Why ye be peno? Obasana ye be yo. O to be out in Yenaya. Obasana ye be yo. Yami why ye be peno? Obasana ye be yo. O to be out in Yenaya. Obasana. Ascendancy of administration so the secret are you in church the secret of David's victory against Goliath of God was based on administration it's based on what it's based on administration Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something that will shock you. Anytime the devil presents things to you to make you frightened, just sit down quietly. Leave everybody. Sit down quietly and think about something God did for you. Gain your strength in that level and fight on. You can't give up. You must fight on. But don't fight on by your strength. Fight on by God's record in your life. Shout amen to the Lamb of God. You will win. You will win. Can you do me a favor? Look at somebody I see me excited and say, you will win. I don't like it. I say, look at the person with smile on the face and say, you will win. I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will win. Give him a shout if you can. Give him a shout if you can. Love your way. So the first one is what the ascendancy of affinity. The second one is ascendancy of attention. The third one is ascendancy of what administration. The fourth, the 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 fourth. Am I going to the fourth one? The fourth one is ascendancy of application. Shout the ascendancy of application are you learning something today you will listen everything you apply will bring result to you Amen. now application of covenant is needed for the implementation of your new realm experience Apostle, what are you trying to say I'm going to show you something why do I feel so much presence of God around me every covenant you have with God must be able to be activated and implemented covenant with god covenant of i will be with you i will protect you i will provide for you hey. <laughs> i heard jacob made that statement he said god if you protect me and you will provide for me and you will be with me when i go and come back I will come and give you one tenth of what you have blessed me with. And this is a mystery that, you know, of our work with God. We work with God by covenant. We work with God by covenant. When we hear the God of Abraham is the God that Abraham that had covenant with God. The God of Isaac is Isaac that had covenant with God. The God of Esau, uh, Jacob, the Jacob that had covenant with God. Now, if they mention Inkum, or they mention Ewa or Alice, are you listening to me? Or they mention, are you listening to me? If your name must go alongside with a covenant with God, a man who has covenant with God cannot be touched by demonic systems. So, I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to go to the church check your covenant level. You are too powerful that all tests must give up on you. Are you shouting amen here? Demonic all tests will give up on you. Can you move with me quickly? Please, quickly. Oh my God. Are you in church at all? Are you in church? 
it is my prayer today that God bring you into a realm of application don't only say God provide apply the principles that will multiply and bring you the result that you are needed do you understand what I'm saying don't say God protect whilst we are still afraid if you believe God protect then don't fear the Lord is my strength and my son. whom shall I I will not fear because the Lord is my strength and my so my level of security is encapsulated in God's promises for my life so I don't have to I don't have to just hear it I must apply it application of ascendancy ascendancy of application now the old gives birth to the new let's look at Joshua chapter 5 verse 3 I'm almost done so Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the hill of the first king. listen to me you must make a point to circumcise yourself hey are you listening to me circumcision is of the heart so papa have an anger problem cut it I am suffering from unforgiving spirit cut it I'm suffering from coming to church late cut it I am, are you listening to me? I am suffering from immorality. Do what? Cut it. I am suffering from hiding and smoking weed. Cut it. I am suffering from drinking ogogro. Do what? Cut it. Ogogro, ogogro. Some of you is hanneking. You can, you can, you can. Are you listening? You know ogogro. Ogogro is a special name for people who can drink something and they will touch their chest seven times because what they have drunk have shaken their chest. Yes. Physically, it kills everything around their chest. So I pray it doesn't kill things in their stomach. Ogogro. Toba Asaria. Then you will go and buy toffee and begin to lick it. We, we, we know all those things yeah. and they chew gum but your breath your breath your breath the Holy Ghost will reveal you are you listening to what I'm saying yes cut it it is you cut it you are lazy it's your first skin cut it I wrote something some time ago. I said that entitlement and dependency spirit is the reason many people are lazy and don't want to discover what will help them to recover in the game of life. No of our home. Me uncle. Oh, me so for Wow. May God grant you the grace, the fortitude to cut the first game. In six minutes, I will be done. I'll give you the microphone. So, number five is ascendancy of accommodation. There is a place at the top for everyone who has encountered the grace of God. Every one of us can be at the top. Every one of us. Say, I am a candidate for the top. Every one of us can be at the top. I'm telling you. Don't say, oh, I heard one lady say that, oh, I can't have a pen asset, where are you? See, see, I didn't want to know. Maybe. There are more better people than the people you are seeing that are looking for you that you don't know. The ways of God are mysterious. There is a provision from above for anyone captured in the will of God. 
there's a scripture I saw in Genesis 17, 23. I've not been able to sleep on that scripture today. You know, I can read one scripture for more than 50 times because I want something to drop in my spirit. So Abraham took Ishmael, his son, all who were born in his house and all who were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house and circumcised the flesh of their false kings that every that that very same day as God has said to him. Today I am saying to you that there are things that as a father I am telling you, cut it off. I say cut it off. When I say, he said that same day, I say cut it off. And it means that the reason why I said that the ascendance of accommodation is that people might think that oh Ishmael is not qualified but when God said they should circumcise everybody even Ishmael was what you can't hear me even Ishmael was what and I was wondering where was Isaac when Ishmael was circumcised can I pray for you today there are things you think they are illegal but some illegal things can have legalities in the kingdom God had to make, watch this, God had to make the, 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 the Ishmael to be circumcised so that Ishmael will be part of the covenant of his father Abraham. Have you ever started to think about this? Sit down and think about it. As I'm talking to you right now, the richest people in the world are Ishmaelites. Saudi Arabia, uh, Iraq, Iran, eh? Le the, the Lebanese, the, you know, the United Emirates. Now, if everybody in America want to go for holidays, they are going to Dubai. Africa, Dubai. Wherever, Dubai. Ishmael, why? Abraham received the instruction, took Ishmael, and went to circumcise Ishmael. So Ishmael is part of God's covenant. So Ishmael was circumcised. But he's not the promised child. He's not the one that can lead you to the father. But he's still, a, he's still circumcised. He's still part of the covenant. He's a covenant child. Who am I communicating with here? So you wonder why they are gaining so much grounds. Gaining so much grounds. Doing many things. It is because of that. Let me tell you. Everybody can be lifted. Illegitimately. They have become greater than children who were born legitimate. Because sometimes, because the child came to man's calculation by error, the mother or the father want to make sure that the child's life become better. So they struggle to fight for that child to become a better child. They fight and some people, when they are even born in a rich family, they will be There is nothing like that. I'm telling you, that is the truth. So listen, if your child become fortunate, fortunate that you are blessed, you were blessed before the child was born, teach that child the way of the Lord. Beat that child when that child make a mistake. I say, do you, do you hear what I just said? Don't say, oh, do, don't spare the rod to spoil the child. Correct that child when that child is wrong. Because you might, you might be following these white people's, some of their stupid philosophies. How can I give that to my child and what they want to tell me how to treat my child? When my child now starts becoming a weed smoker and arm robber, are you the one who will change my child for me? Or when they arrest my child, are you the one who will come and tell me that uh, are you the one who is going to bail my child for me? So the Bible said, train up a child the way he should grow. And when he is grown, he will not depart from it. Clap your hands if you can. I'm done preaching. May the Lord bless you. Hey, I say, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. 
May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord make you a thousand times more. May your life be fruitful. May your ways be fruitful. In the name of Jesus, may God take you higher and higher. May God take you higher and higher. Greater and greater. May God make you an example of his goodness. May your life be full of testimonies. Amen. May your life be full of testimonies. Amen. May your life be full of testimonies. Amen. Give the Lord a clap and a shout in the house. So most of you did not come to church on time. Go and listen to the tape. You will never be the same. Especially the first point. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The revelation that will shift your life. Can you stand up? Let me declare over your life. Let me pray for you. My brother, my brother, my brother, Stretch your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, May this week be a week of testimonies. May this week be a week where we will deliberately circumcise ourselves Amen. from things that have fought our lives. Amen. From things that is challenging our sanity. Amen. From things that make us look like we are children. Amen. Even though we are grown. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. I declare the grace to circumcise. Amen. The grace to circumcise. Amen. Amen. That the things that will destroy our lives yes, Lord. help us to cut them off Amen. and bring us closer to you. Amen. In bonding, yes, Lord. in knowing, yes, Lord. in understanding you, yes, and in coming close to you. In the name of Jesus, I decree yes, that this week everybody will see you and see Christ in your life. Amen. Everybody will see you yes, and Lord. see grace in your life. Amen. Everybody will see you yes, and see Lord. glory in your life. Amen. Everybody will see you Jesus. and see the goodness of God Amen. at work in your life. Yes. May you receive things you have not worked for. Amen. May God show you mercy this week. Amen. May God show you favor this week. Amen. May God honor you this week. Amen. And may God make you a testimony this week. Amen. I bless you today Amen. with the blessings of the Almighty God yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. And everybody will shout a louder Amen. Amen. Amen.